So this material should all be new um, and not uh, repeating what we've been talking about, at least here. Um, we're going to talk about uh, TVAR for uh, Stanford Type B aortic dissection. Uh, we can classify dissections based on anatomy, whether or not they have complications and their timing. Uh, I think everyone here knows um, Stanford Type A dissections originate in the aortic arch uh, and are separate from those that originate uh, in the descending thoracic aorta, so-called Stanford Type B dissections. Complications from uh, type A dissections, including coronary ischemia, uh, acute aortic regurgitation and tamponade are life-threatening, and therefore uh, acute type A dissections undergo surgical repair, whereas uh, for type B dissections or dissections in the descending thoracic aorta, we look for complications to intervene. Um, timing. Uh, acute dissections are classified as under two weeks, chronic greater than two weeks, but there has been a suggestion that we should classify dissections into a subacute phase where the aorta is not quite so friable and prone to injury as they are in acute, but where the uh, septum is not quite so stiff as they are in chronic, uh, the so-called uh, subacute phase between 14 and 90 days. Uh, as shown by the uh, IRAD registry, um, the the top line is um, medically managed type A dissection. They do the worst, and the patients that do the best are medically managed type B dissections. So initially, uh, for type B dissections, the goal is um, medical management, and the indications for intervention are complications such as rupture or impending rupture, uh, which would be um, noted by a hemorrhagic effusion, uh, rapid false lumen expansion, or ongoing pain or malperfusion in the renal, mesenteric, uh, lower extremity, or spinal cord. And these malperfusions can either be by a, a dynamic means or a static means, and I will show you what I mean here. So here's a typical um, type B dissection. You can see the uh, true lumen uh, tapering uh, to a near occlusion and the false lumen uh, pressurized by arterial flow compressing the true lumen. And uh, as you move down the aorta, the uh, true lumen is compressed further and further until you get to the branch vessels. Um, with static obstruction, the false lumen can have uh, clipped off, uh, shall we say, the uh, true lumen, or this area could have thrombosed uh, such that the artery is now uh, occluded. More common is dynamic obstruction. Here is an IVIS image with the catheter placed inside the true lumen. You can see the uh, false lumen um, pressurizing and causing the uh, intimal flap to nearly occlude the uh, true lumen. What we do for this is uh, TVAR, or thoracic endovascular aortic repair. Uh, we get a wire and catheter through the true lumen. Uh, we uh, always use IVIS to guarantee that we are within the true lumen the whole way. Uh, typically, these uh, dissections start near the subclavian, and in order to get good seal, we typically land the stencraft close to the common uh, carotid artery, not always. Uh, in this uh, picture, they've shown revascularization of the left subclavian artery, which is not required. Uh, we certainly wouldn't sew it off of the aorta like this. Um, uh, you can't just cover the left subclavian unless, there are, uh, unless there's rupture. And what happens is, when you place the stent graft across the uh, entry tear, you have covered the proximal entry tear and restore flow into the true lumen. And this restores flow to critical branch vessels and hopefully induces a uh, aortic remodeling and a false lumen thrombosis. And here is the uh, same IVIS pullback to that same patient after TVAR uh, showing nice expansion of the true lumen and restoration of flow to critical branch vessels. Another case, uh, TVAR for impending rupture. You can see uh, rapid false lumen expansion here. The, the graph goes in across the left subclavian artery. This is where we have our diagnostic catheter. And the uh, uh, false lumen is sealed. Uh, some tep technical tips for doing this. Um, we put the imaging catheter either up the leg or via the arm. Typically recommend a five French um, pigtail to get a good contrast load so you can visualize the anatomy. 
Uh, we typically cover the left subclavian, not always, but typically cover the left subclavian and to really practice a very gentle technique. Uh, I like the way that uh, Dr. Uh, Ali Azizadeh from Houston describes this. He says you have to go in like a thief in the night. Try to sneak in and sneak out without anybody knowing that you're there because that, that uh, aorta is very friable and very prone to injury. Uh, and we uh, try to avoid retrograde uh, arch extension when doing these procedures. Uh, to do that, we limit stent oversizing and do not balloon uh, as we would do in a standard EVAR or TVAR for aneurysm. And it's important to recognize that you do not need to cover the entire dissection. Uh, doing so unnecessarily extends the uh, repair and causes an increase in the risk to uh, the spinal cord. Now here's what you hope to see with uh, some aortic remodeling. Over time, you can see the false uh, lumen decreasing in size. Here's another case. Um, nice uh, obliteration of the false lumen. Here's the true lumen, which is still compressed. Here's the false lumen thrombosed. And then you still have the false lumen uh, going all the way down into the iliac uh, vessels, but not causing a problem. Now, what to do about uncomplicated type B aortic dissection is still controversial. Uh, the problem with these patients who are managed medically is that late aneurysm formation occurs in about 40%. And the number one reason for intervention uh, greater than 90 days is late aneurysm formation. These patients do not enjoy the same survival as their age and sex-matched uh, sex uh, cohorts, and the mortality uh, still is 30 to 40 percent at five years. Now, there have been a couple of trials, the INSTEAD trial and the ADSORB trial, which have randomized patients to uh, TVAR, uncomplicated type B aortic dissection patients into TVAR. Uh, the problem is that there was a very uh, low uh, number of enrolled patients, and in, instead they only uh, followed them for two years and in adsorb only for one year, really a time period too short to um, appreciate a difference. Here's a typical uh, patient who has a late aneurysmal degeneration from a type B dissection. You can see that the, um, the dissection uh, encroaches really quite close to the uh, left subclavian artery and the false lumen becomes quite large. The true lumen is quite small. And uh, here's the angiogram. And these patients can be very tricky to uh, take care of in a, in a simple fashion. Uh, really, in, the, in this case, the patient had a uh, carotid subclavian bypass. We ended up snorkeling into the uh, aortic arch and covering up to the level of the innominate artery. So to summarize, uh, medical management is the mainstay for most patients with type B aortic dissection who do not have complications um, and TVAR uh, can be life-saving for patients who do have complications such as rupture and uh, malperfusion. You need careful technique to avoid secondary complications, and still the treatment for uncomplicated type B aortic dissection is under investigation. Thank you. Any questions? Are you, how, I have one quick question for you. How, how aggressive are you with some of the higher risk uh, features that have been described? I know it is still a little controversial, but some of the um, you know, size of entry tear, <clears throat> size of uh, you know, the, the aortic lumen when you're treating the uncomplicated type Bs. We, we talk about it a lot, but we, we generally do not treat the patients unless they have uh, you know, malperfusion, impending rupture, ongoing pain. Um, we, we, we really do, we talk about it, but we have not done it in the absence of, of good data that it, it does benefit. Okay. I think you might be a little more aggressive. How do you guys approach it? Yeah, we, we are. I mean, we, we, we have gotten even more aggressive, I think, with our, uh, in combination with our cardiac surgeons. Um, and, and, yeah, we t typically end up using those, those high-risk features, and we've actually mapped out a little algorithm, which I can't even remember the whole thing. It's like a two-sheet PDF that got sent around to all the, <clears throat> all the cardiac and vascular surgeons. So we are a little more aggressive about it, um, but I think, you know, probably having the backup of uh, cardiac surgery there makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, that happens all the time. Um, Depends where the malperfusion is. Commonly, you can do the TVAR and uh, one of the legs is, is not reperfused. 
um, that could be thrombus or, um, <clears throat> or, or a, a flap that's retaining. Sometimes we go in and have to uh, stent that, do a fem-fem bypass. Um, sometimes they have ongoing mesenteric ischemia. Uh, that's tough because now the, the ischemic window has been long. Uh, options there, again, you can try to uh, stent into the SMA or do an open open uh, repair of the SMA, tack down the, the uh, dissection and retrograde stent back into the true lumen. Uh, the renals, typically, if there's one renal open and one is closed, we uh, don't intervene on, I think, because the ischemic window, again, has been so long that meaningful renal recovery might not, it might not make it worth it to do that. But especially the patients, I think, who have mesenteric ischemia, um, there's high mortality and morbidity there. Yeah, I, I think that's gotten better in term, when going after the, the proximal aortic entry tear for, for starters. And once you kind of you know, set the, the right um, TVAR size to that, to the proximal aorta, then the rest sort of falls in line. You may have to, have to additionally stent the SMA or, or the iliacs have the general surgeons perform a laparotomy, do fasciotomies on the leg, something like that. But setting that aortic entry tear back, it usually takes care of everything. It's just a matter of like in that, in that one arch that you showed that's easier said than done when the, when the arch is all bunched together. Sometimes even in extreme examples requires, you know, even though it's type B, requires an open, uh, you know, circa rest arch replacement by the cardiac surgeons.